is Lagatha's enclosure. She had a nice big juicy rat two days ago. I've got a lot of lumber that I've been burning. I am building the ultimate cyclora enclosure. This is gonna be amazing, people. If you look at Hercules, he's actually got an irregular scoop, so that's a little bit of an abnormality. What's going on, everyone? Kenan here, and boy, do we got a lot going on. We got Mr. Arrington here. You might know him as the man who gave birth, or, well, he didn't really do the giving birth part. That was Mrs. Arrington. But actually, it's Robert and Gabe Arrington's pop, and he's a uh, very capable bobcat operator. And uh, man, we got a lot going on here. I've got Phil being brought in, and uh, I thought I'd give you guys an update while I answer some questions here for Camp Cannon. Thank you to our amazing supporters who help to make this show possible every week. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennan. This week's special shout out goes to longtime supporter Ross Parnagian. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. So let me show you what I got going on, man. Really, really cool stuff. So here's Lagatha's enclosure and she's been doing uh, well. She had a nice big juicy rat two days ago. Uh, she still likes to hide in her hide box. So what I'm doing is I'm going around and I'm actually adding some more of this stuff right here. And I'm gonna create a little bit more of a visual barrier and also gonna provide a little bit more shade. Now, her being a canopy dweller, I figure she really likes to have a lot of shade and she wants to sunbathe in the dappling of light that comes through this thing. So still a lot of work to do with her. Uh, but as you can see, I've got a lot of lumber that I've been burning and scraping and I am building the ultimate cyclora enclosure for my home. This is gonna be amazing, people. So what I'm doing right now is I've brought some fill to kind of raise the dirt up a bit. And by raising this dirt up, we're gonna make sure that it's not gonna get flooded. And we're also gonna be keeping these animals digging in a specific area. So that's what's going on here. Uh, in just a few weeks, I'm gonna have some really good people from uh, Knitwire out of the UK, they're coming over and they're bringing me a thousand foot of a really cool wire mesh that we're gonna use to actually screen this thing in. And it is going to be a massive enclosure for my Cyclora. Uh, I figure that we'll put Guapo and Lola in this enclosure, Petro and Petra. Then we're gonna put the two rhino iguanas that I got last year uh, that had the bashed up face. His face is healing up nice. I want to kind of get that pair into a new enclosure and then eventually I'm going to add another 8 by 24 foot long enclosure here so it's just going to be a lot of work so that's what I've been up to it's been non-stop insanity for what I've got going on uh yeah, it's just nuts plus we got another dump truck on the way and we have one more load of fill but let's get to a question uh yeah this is uh from Ben Holstein and Ben says, hey, Cannon, we have a nine month old Sokata who's a little small for his age. It looks, it looks, it looks like he has an extra plate on the side of his carapace that is smaller than all the rest of him, almost looks like a dent. Would this be normal or possibly from an injury while developing in the egg? Well, check it out, everybody. I just happen to have a Sokata hanging out right here. It's Hercules. And if you look at Hercules, he's actually got a little bit of an irregular scoot situation going on and uh, you can see right here this scoot joins the other scoot now it's a symmetrical it's a symmetrical i wouldn't say defect i don't know but it is not the normal scoot pattern that you would find uh you can see this marginal right here is a little bit irregular it's misshapen a bit normally the marginals uh, excuse me, the vertebrals. This is the vertebrals right here. Uh, the marginals are on the outside. Uh, and then we also have coastal scoots and so on. But uh, the vertebral scoot, scoots here, he's actually missing one of them. And these, uh, these scoots here actually join up. So that's a little bit of an abnormality. Uh, it doesn't affect the way the animal moves. It doesn't affect the way he lives his life, but it is definitely something that is not normal. And that gives him a little bit of a uh, well unique appearance uh, he's also got a little bit of a dent in here and what scientists think causes that is temperature in the egg development during the egg uh, phase of their life so during the embryonic phase of their life uh, these guys are actually um, going through uh, different development inside the egg as you can imagine 
and temperature really affects that in many ways with reptiles, especially tortoises, turtles, and of course crocodilians. And what I'm talking about is temperature sex determination. Uh, higher temperatures tend to produce males, lower temperatures tend to produce females. And it could also be flipped. It could be flipped um, uh, with crocodilians. I think it's flipped or it might be higher for crocodilians, lower for males, lower for tortoises. I forget at this moment, but there are different uh, ratios, sex ratios that happen with uh, the heat during incubation. Now, what happens is a lot of breeders, uh, tortoise breeders tend to uh, incubate at the higher range and they're incubating at that higher range because they want to produce females. That's what it is. There you go. So I answered my own question. Uh, it's higher in tortoises uh, to produce females. Uh, now, it looks like the other sulcatas have seemed to have gone to sleep. And I really wanted to show you Brutus because Brutus has a very unique design on his carapace. Is he in there? Yeah. And of course, he's all the way back there, everybody. I'll tell you what. I love you all so much, so very much. I think I'll climb in there and we'll show you anyway, because I go to great lengths for my friends who want to learn here uh, on the channel. Let's get in with everybody. I like the fact that these kids are going in for the evening on their own. Lumpy seemed to be the last tortoise out. So we got all the females, and when you're dealing with a large group of animals, you're gonna notice that there are gonna be some irregularities. Now this tortoise right here, she's got a little bit of an irregular scoot, um, different scalation or scoots patterns but no big deal. Now let's get over here. Let's check out good old Brutus. You see how he's got the white, uh, what we call scud. It's a little bit of a fungus uh, that develops on his carapace. Whereas most of the time on tortoises, it'll develop on their plastron. Now, why does it develop way up top on his carapace? I'll tell you why. He's got a little bit of a plate, a little bit of a bowl shape right here. And that bowl collects water and mud. These guys will throw mud on their backs to cool down and also act as an insect repellent because believe it or not, mosquitoes can get their proboscis right through the annuli, uh, the little tiny rings on the tortoise's shell. Isn't that incredible? So these guys, even though they have this really nice hard shell, a mosquito can still extract blood from the tortoise through their shell. So I've seen the tortoises throwing mud up on their backs and it acts as a buffer, it acts as a repellent because they can't get their nose through that mud. But you see the shape that he's got. So that keeps it wetter longer. So I have to come out and manually scoop out some of the mud because it crusts up on them and uh, that's what causes a little bit of scud. Now, wild tortoises will also get scud so it's not the end of the world. You just don't want uh, this to become septic. And how does it become septic? Well, number one, it would be a different infection. Uh, this is a very superficial, uh, um, kind of fungus that you can get on tortoises from time to time. All you got to do is get some Lotrimin, uh, even Vaseline, Bacitracin, uh, basically things that you can cover and kill the fungus with. Uh, it's very easy to get rid of. I, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't hurt the tortoises, so no big deal. Now, when you have an animal that's got shell rot, the ulcerative kind of shell rot, where it's eating away at the shell, and then there's fresh tissue, and these guys are, are bleeding, that's when you can potentially get an animal to go septic, and that's no good. So you want to look out for that. But uh, as far as all the tortoises, they're looking really good. I had moved them into this area because it is more high and dry than the back, and you can see how much work is going on in the back. So... Uh, you know, I'm raising up the levels um, of the ground back there so that we don't have any more issues. Uh, but you can see here, Ben, no issues. Uh, tortoises are all going to have their own unique appearance. And uh, I just say, why not love them the way they are? Uh, I know that some people want to have the most perfect, ah, the perfect tortoise shells. And a lot of Asian people uh, enjoy when the tortoises look absolutely flawless. Me personally, I just want a healthy, happy tortoise. Uh, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, but symmetry is very important culturally in some of these countries. Uh, what with Feng Shui and all kinds of interesting things like that. Uh, uh, here's Lumpy, by the way. Lumpy's doing very well. Looking beautiful. And again, uh, you know, here's a little divot. He's got a little divot there. But, I mean, other than the slight pyramiding that he had when he was very young, uh, this tortoise is just doing fabulous. And, of course, we're so happy that Lumpy is still with us. Uh, we had a problem uh, earlier, well, late last year, uh, we had to have a feeding tube put in him. And so there you go. I think I got another truck coming in. 
I think I hear it. Yeah, we got another truck, guys. Girls, people of all ages watching this channel. So we got to back this guy in. We got to dump another load of dirt. And we got to keep working on that uh, iguana enclosure because guess what? I'm leaving to go to Australia really soon. So I want to have as much done before I go to Australia. Uh, be on the lookout for videos from Australia, everybody. It's going to be a fun time. I'm going to visit my friend Peter Birch. We're going to see Colin. We're going to see all kinds of my friends from Australia. So I'm really pumped on this trip. Let me go ahead right now and make sure that this guy, oh look, he's doing a good job. He's coming right on back. Uh, as long as he doesn't hit any of the tortoise enclosures, I think we'll be good. Let me go help him right here, folks. He's looking good, looking good. How you going, mate? Keep coming. Maybe I should help him out see what's going on hey what's up bud uh all right everybody i'm gonna sign off help this gentleman out and i'll see you guys later so long <laughs>